Well, good afternoon. We're really, really getting all geared up and getting excited about sharing with you how to get your car seats looking like brand new. No matter what condition that they're in, I'm gonna show you how we're going to repair this Land Rover. What is this car? I think it's Toyota, Toyota Land Rover, am I saying it correctly? I think so. This car belongs to our realtor, and he's a young man who's been using this car for even when he was just a child, and he is emotionally attached to this vehicle, he told me yesterday, and I can't wait to get these seats looking like brand new. We're also going to be repairing the steering wheel, and uh, lots of big cracks, and there's one here in the seat. He has another car, so he was uh, hoping we could make this one look fantastic, and uh, I told him I believe that we can. So uh, let's take a look at it, and we're gonna also show you how that uh, we've been working on the golf cart. We did half of the seat with you one day and we've never gone back to actually repaint the other half. And uh, Craig's Shocker. been using it now. <laughs> we've been using it for a while. So you'll get to see how the color oyster in our restore coat line has been holding up on one side of the seat. And then I'm gonna paint the other side. So it'll all match finally and get its full facelift right here on this live. So stay with us. I'm gonna be using the color to paint this, but I'll be painting it tomorrow and I'm gonna be using the color charcoal. So it's a dark gray. And again, in our restorecoat.com line, if you wanna take a look at that, you can. I've already got all my gloves and I'm gonna wipe this down using our prep product. And you can get that right from Restore Coat. And it is just our deglosser. If you're, if you're wondering what that might be, you wanna get off all the oils and all the dirt that are on this seat where you've sat here and uh, all down in all the cracks and crevices, you wanna be able to remove all the oils and the grease or anything that may have been used to clean the seat with through the years. And most of those have an emollients in them like silicone or oils and uh, who knows what is gone on these seats. So we will make sure and get all that off so we can get a good bond with the Restore Coat. Uh, we're gonna be putting on the Restore Coat compound and fix this big crack right here that's right down to the foam. And uh, I'll be also putting some on right here in all of these heavy surface cracks that are in this leather. As you know, Toyota will last many, many thousands of miles. And sometimes even though these are high quality seats, uh, it's hard to even get good leather seats, even though, no matter what you pay for a vehicle today, you don't even get real leather, oddly. But uh, these are really a great quality seat. But uh, again, they've got a lot of miles on them too. So we're gonna make it look great. And I've already wiped it down before we started here. So I'll just continue just to show you, you're gonna keep wiping that off and get all of this ready to accept, again, the repair compound that we're gonna put down in here. I'll show you how easy it is to fix something like these heavy surface cracks. And these are, if you ever look hard at cracks in your seat, you'll see that they're the nature of actually the skin itself. And it would just be like a wrinkle in your own human skin. You can see that over time, the animal itself has stress cracks in the surface of his skin. And you'll see that that's exactly what happens right here as this begins to age and to wear, those wrinkles show up and they begin to cr crack. And uh, that again is the nature of the leather itself and it is the animal skin that is cracking. So if you didn't know that, but that's why it has that kind of crazed pattern. And uh, we'll try our best to take care of that. So all you need to do is if you get the Restore Coat kit, is you're gonna get out this amazing white stuff here and you're gonna put that on. And just a couple little things you need to do is you're gonna also get this spreader in your kit and you just pick up an amount of the product. And I'm gonna go ahead and fill this crack. I'm also going to do the steering wheel. I about forgot to tell you that. But I'm gonna put this right down into the crack. It would be impossible to sew this. And also there's a seam that's gonna come all the way across here. I'm going to go ahead and fill up this entire seam. And the reason being is if I only concentrate right here on this, then you'll always notice a smooth piece here. So I'm just gonna carry it on across, just like this seam never existed. And I'll put a nice line there, but I'm not going to leave an actual seam line there. I'm also going to be careful not to put it in any others. Just fill this particular one up. And I'm gonna rub this product back across all of the cracks and the crevices here in the heavy used part of this seat. And I hope Mitch is on here watching me. If you're here, Mitch, say hi. I want, I want you to see our, how your seat's gonna look. He wants to pick it up tomorrow, so we're gonna get it ready. <laughs> and Melissa laughs. She laughs. She has this insane laugh going on over there. Like it ain't gonna be ready. Now, why would It'll you doubt? It'll be ready about the time this golf cart got done. <laughs> no, I'm not that gonna do that to him. <laughs> she acts like you're not gonna get your car back tomorrow. Oh, I have to uh, show Mitch, her. I'm gonna 
But my paycheck, you're not getting your car back finished tomorrow. I don't believe that, <laughs> Mitch. Don't listen. Don't listen to that naysayer over here. She's delirious. <laughs> I am tired. She's delirious and laughing only oh. because she knows that I'm going to do this. <laughs> <laughs> Now, hey, if it wasn't his prime, and not it's not his primary car, but you know, I am going to finish this because uh, he's coming to get it. So I can't do him that way, Mel. <laughs> I want to bring up something real quick that I'm seeing on the camera. Sure. Can you but all see? Am I it right you're in your kind way? Of, you're seeing a lot of back of your head at the moment. Here. Well, that's not good. Uh, so if you Let's see in the picture, right. guys, the the back of the chairs look one color, the seats look another color. On this that seat? is the difference. Yep, that is the difference in lighting. It's on every type of finish, including this factory <laughs> right. finish. They're all these the are, same. These are not two different, you know, colors of a seat here. It's not been painted so yet. <laughs> it's uh, that's just the trick that lighting plays on us. So sure. No different when you're painting cabinets or anything else in your home. You got to test colors out in your lighting and see how they look. So I am applying this amazing product right to this seat, and again. I'm going to leave. Oh, Mitch is on here, and he says he trusts you. See, Mitch, I know you trust me, just like I trust you. Mm -hmm. See, I trust you, too. We have a mutual trust here, along with his mother. She was our realtor, and Mitch was also, who sold our house in Miraculous Time, and who helped us close on another house in Miraculous Time, so we wouldn't be without a home to live in. All right, so I'm just pushing that right down in, so we've already covered up the hole here, Mitch. Now, I'm going to keep smoothing it. As you can see, it's already pretty smooth. And um, I'm going to come over here and catch all these stress cracks right here and make this seat look smooth as could be. There's a welt right here as well. Or not a welt, I'm sorry, just a double seam that is baseball stitch. In other words, it has seaming on both sides, top stitch. I'm going to keep out of that because I don't want this to look like it's been repaired. And you can't really see it well on camera, but the part of the seat that she's working on now has a lot of cracks and stuff in the leather so that's why she's going all the way over to there yeah this was a hole if you're just coming on the live and then this is just cracks and again i'm gonna stay out of that seam so after i get this smoothed on here i'm putting on a decent coat of this you don't want to put on this so paper thin and try to maximize your product that you ruin the integrity of the product you want to leave a fair amount on here remember it's not strong if you have it down to paper thin you have to have on about an eighth of an inch thick of the product. If you have a lot of, uh, if you're asking it to be durable, you have to leave something there to be durable. So I'm just kind of like icing a cake here on this. Smoothing it somewhat, but I'm gonna smooth it with my wet glove in just a second. Now I'm gonna fix the steering wheel. Let's see if I can get a better camera angle. Same tool, I'm gonna go right here. So we got see. a couple questions coming in real quick. Okay. Uh, Susan wants to know, will this work if you have heated seats? Yes, absolutely. It doesn't change it at all. So I don't know if you can see this or not, but I do, did take some really good photos, and I'll share those with you later as you we make this. The four photos? I did, even a photo, a video. Oh, so she's just think she don't have any. Mitch, any... you might get your car done after all. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> I know when to work. So this steering wheel has a, a piece here. That's just this whole leather is coming apart. This is a real leather steering wheel, like they used to do in cars. And now it's began, where he's held this so long. It's a he's <laughs> so had a great little grip on, on there. Too. Yes, <laughs> I'm going to fill that up and basically reattach the leather here. And then I'm going to paint this whole steering wheel when we're done. It's not going to be happening today, but once it dries, I'm going to repair that whole thing and then go back over it just a minute here. And you'll see what I'm going to do. I'm trying to stay out of the stitching as much as possible stitched on the underside so i'm gonna just leave it right like that now you want to return your lid back quickly to your product because it's an air drying product and clean off your tool put your lid back on and now we're going to go into the water and uh smooth this with our glove all right you're seeing a lot of head all right sorry <laughs> head gets in the way here i have it's to hard to work in an actual it's hard car. to work when you and and uh, not have a head all right so we got a lot of people just joining us. Can you kind of fill them in? All right, guys. What we're doing, while I'll we're take doing you from the top. We are working with our product from RestoreCoat.com, and this is our Restore product that will help you fix tears and rips in leather and also fill cracks. This had a big, big gash here right down to the foam and in this Toyota, and uh, this car's been around. Gosh, Mitch, what uh, year is this car? Forgot, actually, what year it is, but... Uh, 
Did you say it was the same as mine? I think 2007? 2007. I think, I think that's right. Isn't it, Mitch? 2007? So now the glove. Mitch, I got an old car, too. I just can't. Oh, he loves this car. He rode yep. to school in this car. So uh, he has, he's like he said, he's very emotionally attached to this car and he preferred to drive it and his father also does too. He said they just love this car. Even though they have new cars, they just like this one. So I'm just using some tap water here with my glove and I'm gonna show you the magic of this product. Um, it is a waterborne product. So it's going to move around with water, but it's not gonna rub off. So all you need to do is go in here and we're gonna try to smooth this as smooth as we can for one reason. We want to not have to sand this. So I'm gonna to try to integrate it right into these areas and smooth the rough edges off. And you can see it almost gets like glass just with that little bit of water on it and just move it around. And you can feel with your hand that it's beginning to get smooth, silky, silky smooth. That's what you want. You don't wanna leave it heavy in texture because you can't sand that much of it away. So this is a very important process. There's no other way to do it except this right here, and this works great. Now, make sure to rub off anything that's excess or running or moving down your rest of your seat. And just make a nice, neat setup of this. Again, not thinning it so much that it's gonna be fragile along the edges. That's something you wanna be very aware of. You don't wanna go back into the non-affected areas with a very thin layer that's gonna affect how this holds up. So, trying to keep it off of where we're not wanting to go picked up something here all right good deal now this area there's some places here that I'm gonna make look good just with my glove like that little divot there I'm gonna continue to smooth it down am I in your light I think I'm yep. I think I got a decent camera angle just keep moving it around until it feels slick and you can feel it again this is one of the most important steps and at this point it's just water in the jar yep that's all she's doing just, just water smoothing it out nothing more than water so we're going to try again to get this as smooth as possible so the sanding process is minimal liz wants to know if this would work on cracked dashboards yes it does it works on anything that's cracked it has the ability to stretch and to give and so that's going to let it continue to see where you sit here and you put pressure on this that's going to let it uh, give and dash pads are the same they will contract and they will uh, in the cold weather and the warm weather, they're going to take a beating. So this product is, is able to uh, withstand that mm -hmm. and to still give. All right, so that's going to make it look a lot better. A whole, whole lot better. Just keep smoothing and put on enough water to where you can see it. It looks very shiny, almost like it's slick as glass. You can feel it with your hand and leave it. That's pretty much, you'll be able to sand out some of that texture. Get it to where it doesn't really need a whole lot of sanding to look great. Ladies, if you've got a husband that's into restoring cars, this will save you some money so you can spend it at Hobby Lobby <laughs> or at Heirloom Traditions Paint. There you go. This works on boat seats, car seats, truck seats, lawnmowers, tractors. Couches. Couches, yes. Leather couches. It works on bonded leathers. It will work on bonded leathers, but we want to tell you this right up front. If you have cracking and peeling stuff, you have to remove all of that because this product's going to stick to the surface that's there. And if it's peeling and cracking away, there's no way to get under the layer that's peeling and cracking. So you got to get that off before, and that's not always easy to do. And it depends on the actual quality of that uh, material that you're working on. Some of those, they probably are not worth the money that it takes to fix them. So I'll just give you a little prerequisite there. Just always know what you're working on because you're going to spend some money to do that. And you don't want to fix something that's really not worthy of your time to fix. But good leather things like this, I would highly advise you to work on them because you're going to be amazed at the results that you get. Don't forget to smooth out the steering wheel. Yeah, I'm heading there. Okay. So I let it I felt set. like you were cleaning your gloves and we're about done. Like, no, oh, we're not. Good. She thinks she's got to get up. She's over I here know. lounging on my golf cart. So we're okay. going to go back tomorrow and we're going to be using the color charcoal from RestoreCoat.com. You can check it out and all of these products. You can see the repair compound as well as the Restore paint. And uh, we're going to match this right to it. It's going to dry a little bit darker than you're seeing it here through the jar. But it is a great match to the it interior. Like it's a great match. Yes, it is. So, a couple more questions. Pamela wants to know: Will this work on her convertible top that has some holes in it? Yes, it will. It will work on that. Uh, just uh, make sure that it's in a place because a convertible top is a very thin material. Normally, there's not anything a substrate underneath that. So, 
you may have to put a patch of some sort on there to give it something to hold on to. If it's a hole or missing a chunk out of it or so on, you may have to put a substrate patch that may be an iron-on type patch, a glue-on type patch, a swimming pool patch that works on vinyl, and then you can do the top layer out of this to get it to smooth out if you have missing material. But check out our video that we did on Tanya Tucker's uh, Mustang on her 66 Mustang convertible. And we did a top paint job there. There was no repair to be done, but you can see amazing results. And uh, she and I did that, or I did that actually. And she walked in and we showed it to her, but it's actually a very good video. But just search the word Tanya Tucker and Heirloom Traditions and you'll see that video pop up. And it'll show you how quick you can make it look like brand new. And hers was uh, white, a white top on a dark green Mustang. All right, let's uh, see. One more good question here right. before we get off the seat. I got to go on the steering wheel okay. here. So. Tanya says, and different Tanya, not Tanya Tucker. <laughs> um, Tanya everywhere. What if the seat has those tiny little holes in the leather from the factory? Yes. That's but a, I have a rip, so yeah. how would I do that? Yeah. Okay, so uh, you'll have to decide that you're going to fix an area and cover up those little holes because there's no way for you to go back and emulate those holes unless you want to actually sit there and punch them back in yourself. You could do that if you, I don't know how big of a hole you have, but you could go back and smooth it and then go back and put those little holes in. But uh, you must have a BMW or a European car, uh, maybe a Mercedes, but uh, you can fix it doing that or just smooth out a whole area and make it match on the other side. And... Um, that way it won't look like you have repaired it, hopefully. All right, so let's do the steering wheel now. You have to let it sit just a minute before you start wiping it down with water. You don't want to go right into the soaking wet product. You're going to let it sit and begin to kind of start hardening just a bit, and then you'll get better results if you wait just a minute. All right, so let's do that and uh, see what we have here left. And I believe I'm going to have to add some more to that. So a lot of people interested in it for fixing their boats, and they're asking, how does that work with the seats getting wet? Uh, you mean like after they're repaired? After it's done. After yeah. they're repaired? Mm -hmm. Well, like anything, if it were going to last forever, it's hard to say. So it depends on your boat. It depends on how much sun it's sitting in, how much weather that it's taking. Salt water versus fresh Salt, water. Salt, all of those things. So uh, we're going to say that... Um, something tore them up to begin with, meaning they're already under a lot of stress, a lot of heat, and then the water actually sits in a boat seat as the seats are concave like that. The water sits in there and basically boils and cooks that seat like in a rain. It'll just sit there in a pocket, and you'll see a crack come in that after time. So when you go in there and you fill it up, uh, you're going to do just what I did right here. You're going to fill that up and level that out. This product is a vinyl, so it's going to act like um, an acrylic would act. It's going to roll off that water, but how long will that last? Uh, again, that's going to depend on a lot of factors. It's going to give you a lot of years of service, and I do believe you're going to get great results, but to say it's going to last forever, that would be a real big stretch of the imagination, but I do believe that Just everybody like that's used it, that's forever. right. The factory one won't last forever either, but I believe that you'll get a lot of great use out of it. The boat's going to look good, and uh, you'll be able to see great results that I think you'll be real satisfied with what you spend versus uh, how long it's going to last you. So I don't want to over tell someone that it's going to last. It's going to be perfect for the here on out because that would not be true. But uh, in a car, different. But in a boat where something's going to be full sun, full heat, and uh, always sitting in water and something basically almost like a little bathtub there. And it's going to sit there and boil in the sun and that heat cooking it all the time. But it, because this is a vinyl acrylic, it will sit there and uh, it should shed off that water and not be able to penetrate into it. And it's going to still let it give and flex and bend and uh, should be a great bond and great repair for you. So give it a try. I think you'll be satisfied with it. And it's inexpensive. Uh, the product is actually, how much is the tub just by itself? Uh, $29.99. So the tub is $30 for the repair product. It should fix several seats. And uh, the paint product is all together the kit's 79, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And that's all the tools that you need, but you can buy it individually. So if one of the quarts of paint will cover 140 square feet, meaning several seats. So you only need one kit to get you going, and then you can buy back the other components as you would need them to do your repair job. You don't have to buy the whole kit again. But get the kits, the best value, so you get the tools, and then add on what you might need. If you have more cracks than you do paint areas to cover, get extra of the uh, the compound. So hope that made sense. That went all over the place, but I hope that made sense to you. All right, so uh, I'm going to add a little bit more to this and uh, make it look just a little bit better. I'm not okay. satisfied with that still see that it's there. That was kind of a big area where that had totally peeled off. So 
you can make those decisions because I want to be able to sand this tomorrow I'm going to get done. I can always come back and add more product, but let's just do it now while we can. So Melissa don't have to get up. Because Mitch has to pick his car up tomorrow. Mitch is going to be able to pick his car up tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Mitch, you better hope this paint dries fast. It does. We don't do lives till about 6 or 7 o'clock at night. <laughs> I'm going to do it early for you, Mitch. <laughs> I'm going to do it real early for so, you. So, we got a lot of people questioning sure. um, that they've got pretty deep uh, rips in their seat where foam is exposed. Well, Do they need a patch? Well, that's what this was. I don't know if you saw the front end of this or you did not see the front end of this. This was open probably this much and uh, a lot of foam was exposed here and you do not need a patch. And if you use a patch, you will have problems. There's no way to add a patch into this that you'll be satisfied with the result. Is there anyone on here who remembers the couch that we repaired <laughs> that the puppy chewed gigantic holes on? Yeah. Or out of. Yeah, go check it out on yeah. YouTube. You'll see that we did the arm of the couch. We had a lady who contacted us when we first introduced this product about a year and a half or two ago. And she saw her first live, actually. And she said that she lived nearby. Could she bring her sofa? Her dog had chewed the sofa cushion. And we said, sure, it'd be a great live. Bring it. We need to do repairs. And, you know, that would be an awesome one. And overnight, she contacted us the next day, and she said, well, bleh, we're just not going to bring it because it chewed again another hole in the arm, and the arm hole, seriously, was that much, that big. Down to the wood. To the, of the yeah, to the wood. This was a round arm, you know, like an upholstered arm sofa. And it was a good leather couch, and she said she had company coming, couldn't afford a new sofa. So I said, bring it on, we'll try to fix it. So we did, and I filled the hole full of foam so it wouldn't take so much of the product and uh, put the whole thing back together, kind of like building a cake up. And it looked great. You'll have to go see it. It's a great YouTube video. And if you're interested in seeing it, just comment right here below. I'll send you the link to that video so you can see it, see them and I'll put them all in the playlist so you can see all the videos pertaining to this product and other things that we've done through the years. Okay, so there you go. And that's got enough on the steering wheel and I've already wiped it back. So we should be ready to go there. And tomorrow I'll paint the steering wheel and uh, Get it looking great so there you go so now yeah, get up melissa <laughs> now let's go paint something Kicking me let's go paint day. something before she goes to sleep over here oh. and uh all right so we got our little golf cart here and ask questions guys if you are coming on to this live and you've never seen these amazing products i want you to comment this as you can see this is an old one wheel golf cart it is so old ladies and gentlemen <laughs> i don't even know where you get a one wheeled golf cart but craig found it so uh it's a uh, one he rides around he said he hauls garbage in it but i believe he just likes to play in it honestly <laughs> so uh here's the piece that we did some time ago and you may have caught that live and we repaired some places on the seat here on this side as well as on this side and let me turn that where you can see but this is the bonding flex here on this and these are like weird little chunks of the corner that we're missing here and this could use a little bit more product in it but uh i'm gonna just go for it so you can see i'm gonna wipe this down again just to make sure yeah there's a big boot print on the other seat over well there. somebody's probably used it. yes there is a boot print on there boot print <laughs> came uh after the fact so we're going to use our and it is not mine. prep product here let me just wipe it down because i'm gonna give this another coat and just show you Oh, that's our ceiling fan that you're seeing kind of flashing back there. Oh, is that what it is? Oh, yeah, I see that what they think it was. They think it's the dashboard. I am going to turn his car off. Oh, yeah, turn that off. Yeah, Mitch, I don't want your battery to be down. So just wipe How that off. Drive it home <laughs> there you go. That'll be the excuse. <laughs> you can't take it because it's dead. The battery's dead. All right, so get all that off. And this thing, as you can see, has been sitting out. It's molded mildew down in it and it's already into the cellular part of the vinyl so you're not going to wipe it off it's in it it's become part of it so no need to worry just act like you don't see it because you won't hear in just a minute just make sure there's nothing topical there and if you're seeing your rag is coming up clean as it is here pretty clean i've already wiped this down before so to be all in all fairness i'm not going to get a lot off of this so we're going to use the color oyster i already stirred this up and uh, I'm going to give it a good wipe or good coat with the whole thing really quick. And I'm going to do brush and roll here, meaning I'm going to brush on the paint and then I'm going to roll it back just so we can show you how great that this is going to look once you roll through it and all the repairs that we made. This was one coat on this before. 
and it could use another coat probably. It actually looks really good for one coat. Okay, so we got quite a few people here a little bit confused about the different paint products and why we're using Restore Coat versus the other. Can they only use Restore Coat? Oh, gotcha. Other, all that good well, stuff. let me help you here. Restore Coat is our brand that we put together for the automotive industry so people can understand it's for cars. It is exactly the same product as our all-in-one paint. And all the prep product for Restore Coat is also our deglosser in all-in-one paint. So if you're using all-in-one paint, it works just the same. If you're new to our product and you want something that sounds like an automotive product and your husband wouldn't want to paint something otherwise with a product he thinks is for kitchen cabinets, then you probably should get the Restore Coat brand. So that's what it's all about. And the color palette is very automotive-y. Absolutely. The color palette is pretty simple to understand. The colors are very simple. The gray is called gray. The black is called uh, black. <laughs> red is called red. So it's a real simple. That's we had to turn our creative brains off for that. Yes, one. it was a, it was hard. Not that men aren't creative, but we just tried to take the guesswork out so they can understand our color names a little easier than the word Iron Gate and so on. So, as you understand, as women understand. So, you guys often ask me about bubbling. So you're seeing this real quick. This bubbles. Look at the bubbles. Look, look, look. See all these bubbles? That's what makes this work, guys. When you say it bubbles, it bubbles for a reason. All those little holes, you see those little holes? That's what it needs to do. Bubbling is part of the way it is stippling the paint. So versus using the true applicator and stippling, you're getting the same stippling motion, meaning redistributing the paint using this. So that's why I brush on a good coat of product. If you just try to roll this on, you can do that, but you're not going to get on much paint, and you're going to make yourself work a lot harder if you just put it on with a brush and then roll back through it and make it just kind of, even if it bubbles up, just keep going through it. Just give it a minute, let it lay down, and you go right back through it until the bubbles subside. Real easy. I'm not pushing hard, but even if I do, it doesn't do anything strange. Just push. Just push and roll a little. So I'm not trying to paint it with it. I'm just trying to stipple and move the paint so it looks consistent all over. That's all you're doing. And someone I saw post the other night, why do you have to do all this special stuff to this paint? You don't. You can brush it on just like you brush on any paint. But if you want it to work easy for you, these are the methods that make painting easy and simplify the method. You make it complex when you start thinking you have to do all these things. So if you, if you just remove the idea that you can brush it on, you can brush it on with any kind of brush. But if you want to use and make it easy on yourself, using these little tools like this cause you less time, less effort, and also you won't have tracking marks, you won't have lines, meaning you won't have to make another coat or two or even three coats. So if you put it on and use these little methods, you won't also have brush strokes. Most, the, most, the greatest part about it is you will not be able to detect that you've rolled on paint and painted your golf cart seat with a brush. Mm -hmm. That's the beautiful part, okay? And the That's... color is Oyster, for those that are asking. And if you remember the old color called Burlap, this is also its counterpart, so it's exactly the color Burlap. If you like Burlap from our old line, old color names, this is the exact color, so. And you can't tell it by the color card because if you look online, they don't look the same, but they are. All right, Paula, I've got an oddball question for you, but I've got several people asking it oddly enough, so okay, I'm so going to ask be that away odd. here. Uh, can <laughs> they use the Bond and Flex to repair uh, holes and such in vinyl siding on a home? Uh, sure. I mean, it's vinyl, and it isn't acrylic, so yes, you can use that. I've had that, I've had that question asked many times. Oh, yes, you can. You can. It must be a common problem, so yes, you can do it. And probably you know, I there's melted not the siding on my last house with the grill. You melted. That might be what's happening to people. Mm -hmm. They may be just yep. damaging it. Yeah. Well, wouldn't that be cheaper than going out and trying to replace the siding and then tearing off layers yeah. to get down to a damaged piece? Well, you can't replace it and have it not look like a patch, too. Yeah. So there you go. Maybe that's what everybody's doing. You guys are melting your house with your with your grill, <laughs> 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 cooking the house, cooking a steak. There you go. All right, so uh, this takes so little product, and it comes in only quarts, just so you know. That's another reason that, people, coat. That's another reason that people buy the all-in-one paint, is because this comes in only quarts. And uh, that may change in the future, but right now, it's only in quarts. I hope you can see me here. 
Because, and I the truth get around is, here. if you got to paint a car, if you got to paint a car seat, it's going to take you a court. That's right. So you are going to need a court to get it done. Um, Vinette wants to know, will it fade? Will it fade? It will not fade. I mean, who knows? Over a hundred years from now, it might fade. But mm -hmm. It's an awesome product as far as fading goes. And this is not a new product, guys. Just so you know, we've been around about seven years. We've been making this paint for about how many years? Four? Four or five. Four or five I've years, somewhere in there. Yeah, we're totally losing it. <laughs> so it's been around. People have used it on their cabinets, their shutters, their front doors, or you name it. They've used it everywhere, as well as vinyls and leathers right in the entry of our business here. We have some chairs that I painted that were in my own home, and they're still there, and they still look great. They're still, I'd say they are... Um, four years old, maybe five years old. I don't know, I'll show them to you sometime, but they were co they're in weather vane and they were a dark mahogany, kind of a burgundy color, and now they're in a charcoal gray and they look great. Some, uh, Nancy was here today picking up, matter of fact, a lady that came over that was from Pennsylvania, has a daughter here in Simpsonville. Hi, Nancy, if you come on to the live here, thank you for dropping by today. Pleasure meeting you and your daughter. And uh, anyway, she was commenting about those chairs. They do, they, they look incredible and they, they get some, People sitting in them very often, and again, they're in our front door, so uh, you could never tell they're painted, actually. Okay, so there it is. Well, I'm going to flip it. We go over dry times on either product. Okay, you sure. talk about that? Absolutely. Something else I want to talk to you about, too. When you push down with this roller, when you push, you're going to get this little thing going to track. You see this little line it put right here? I can't see for your comments, too. I'm going to have to move comments so I can see. And by the way, if you're watching this video and the comments are in your way on your phone, you have to do this. Just take your finger and slide them to the right on your phone, and they'll move right over. You have to do it on your side. We can't move the comments. All right, so I'm going to go put another coat on the other side, okay? So if you push down with this thing, you're going to get this to scratch. See that? See that line they'll put in there? So just move right back over it and just lightly roll. So see no more bubbles here? The bubbles are gone. All the little bubbles just lay right down. You just keep on rolling it out. Okay. All right, let's talk about Other dry side. times before we forget. Dry times are all going to be based on a couple things, and that's going to be humidity in the air. And like out here today, the air is literally liquid, <laughs> and uh, it rains here. Somebody mentioned every... you were glowing today. I am glowing, and it's called sweating my behind off. Um, <laughs> but outside of that, it's great. Careful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was I would, that could have been more colorful, but I was not. I was very ladylike, wasn't mm -hmm. I? That's rare. Paula's necklace is origami owl. Is somebody asking about my necklace? Yeah, always. Y'all like that necklace? I tell you, I, I have several. I'm just waiting until somebody notices it. Y'all notice I have a couple, three different ones of these? Mm -hmm. I do like them. I like the shape of them, I think, more than anything. So let's get on this second coat of this. make this look like brand new on this one wheeled golf cart that's probably 30 years old <laughs> this thing will fly guys it literally will fly so on the repair over here i sanded it and never came back to paint it isn't that awful <laughs> well, i see what you have away. to look forward to mitch now mitch i'm not doing you that way brother <laughs> you'll never help me again if you keep telling him that she's act like i never gonna fix your car never gonna fix your truck all right, so let's get get it all the bubble here. So you don't want to leave the bubbles there to dry. You want to roll back through them. The bubbles are normal when you're rolling it like this. Same your thing on your wall. Rate. Have you ever noticed sure. bubbles on your wall? I mean, it's no different. No, you're aerating the paint, and that's what you're trying to do. You're trying to just move it around and take out any little lines. I just roll in every direction. I don't really worry about what way I'm rolling it. And that way, that helps camouflage, again, any directional brush marks or anything like that. So I don't want any any direction to show. I don't want to roll it all perfectly this way because I want to disguise the fact that we've rolled anything. All right, now let me get the back here one more round. So typically we're talking like, what, 24 hours for Bond and Flex to dry? The dry time on Bond and Flex definitely yes. needs to dry good before you try to sand it. So something to sand and particleize has got to be dry don't want it to roll up on you. Okay. So I'm going to say, depending on the depth or the thickness of it, like that couch that we did for the whole arm was chewed off, it took that thing two to three days to dry down inside. And the way you can tell is it's cold to the touch. 
that means there's a lot of moisture still in it. Now, topically, it's, it would have sanded, but I also didn't want to paint it when it was that wet inside because I was going to be sealing in all that moisture. So I don't want to do that. You want to let it all be able to wick out of it and come out, the moisture. And, uh, you know, moisture, if it's trapped inside, it will find its way out through the surface some way. So you want to make sure you don't paint over something that is still holding a lot of moisture. And again, tell that by your hand. But most cases, like today, like what we did here today, that should be ready to sand tomorrow with this heat out here. I'll close that car up tonight so it'll be like a little oven in there and let it bake overnight like a little uh, Susie Homemaker oven. We'll just close the doors up and let it go to town in there. Y'all had one of them, I bet, didn't you? No, I don't think I ever had one of those. That's why you can't cook today, still. I can cook. What are you talking about? That's why I can cook. What are you talking about? <laughs> oh, I just had to say you that. Think I that gear going You think right I'm this chunky because I don't know how to cook? Are you crazy? <laughs> she might pretend she can't cook <laughs> so she don't have to cook. Gosh, all I've done this whole quarantine is cook. <laughs> you might ought to play in like you don't have oh. one. Ever had one. Everybody had a Susie Homemaker oven, didn't they? Did you know what it was? Yeah, I know. I know it's easy. Oh, we called it easy, easy bake. bake oven. That's what it was. Yeah. Well, no, you know what? Easy bake, Susie Homemaker might have been two different things. Huh. I'm sure they were the same microwave uh, bake a cake. Oh, in you had the microwave. Hours. I had the old fashioned oven. There oh. wasn't even such a thing as a microwave when I was a kid. Oh. You had the. It was kind of more like a microwave. Microwave, yeah. fancy dancy. Whenever uh -huh. you're much younger, they moved up to the microwave. <laughs> version of Susie. Susie Homemaker. Would you have one where you had to start a fire underneath of it? Pretty close. <laughs> Smarty. <laughs> yeah, pretty we're close. like we're so far apart in age. We are pretty much no. here. 20 something years no, we are apart. less than 20 years. Well, I'll take it. I know we're not, but I know. No, we are. Well, you're getting ready to turn the big 4-0. Uh-huh. Thanks for telling the world that. I appreciate that. <laughs> well, Hey, I'm getting ready to try it this is what it big 6 0. So, what are you talking about? You still got a few more years. Not much. Two years, close enough. Okay. Um, so, there you go. So, this has two coats. Oh. That has one coat. Holly and Hobby oven is what somebody else Holly said. Holly Hobby. Have. Yep. Holly Hobby. That was another one. Holly Hobby. Y'all remember those Holly Hobby Oh, that's dolls? right. Easy Bake Oven was like a light bulb. That's right. Yes, it was. It was. It really would make some cookies. Um, look how shiny I am. My God, y'all. That is scary. Talk about needing degreaser, deglosser. I need the deglosser on me. Okay, I got a question for you all. And uh, who all is on here? Oh, there's still 400 something, 458. And I know a good part of y'all are women. So I got a question to ask you all. I need to qualify, quantify this answer, especially for my sister. Every time I visit my sister, the question is always one thing. She'll always say to me, why do you always get dressed before you put your makeup on? She, I don't know. She irons her clothes. I do put her clothes it. on. I put my clothes on. Then she does her hair. I do it and all And then she does her makeup. Backwards. So it's which way so do you do it? I want to ask you that question right here. Let's solve this little remedy. This I little... guarantee they all do it like a normal person. So she does like my sister. She gets up in the morning. She sits on her bed, puts her makeup on, spends her time watching TV, lounging mm -hmm. around, doing her hair. I know all this because we, we, we really travel. Show that we <laughs> travel and all that. So she does that. And... Um, then goes, puts her clothes on last, just like my sister, and then finishes her hair and puts her hairspray in all that like a normal person. But I never do it twice the same, to be honest. I hop around and do different things. But uh, I these women up. are trying to make you feel better. Y'all do? No. A lot then. of them are saying they get dressed first. Thank you. Thank you, oh, girls. Wait. Okay, See? hold on. Dress after makeup. Get dressed last. No, everybody has a real definitive how they mm -hmm. do this. Yep. Like my sister, she thinks that is totally off the wall. I know Melissa does too. Uh -huh. You or something wrong with you? Right. How do you? My sister says, "How do you know how the your normal clothes? people are starting to comment now? Makeup, <laughs> hair, clothes. Join the crazy normal club, people. <laughs> Hold your hand up if you're crazy like me. I get it. My sister says, "How do you know how your clothes are going to look if you already get? If you don't? If you, she says, I can't tell how I'm well, going to look. We get makeup on all. I got this memorized pretty good. <laughs> I know how this here from here up looks really well. I can get this, and I just imagine this is done. You know." <laughs> I got a good memory about this. It's haunting me for a long time. So, yeah, um, y'all got to have a certain way here. I just roll with the flow. Some days I do it different. Just break it up. I put on my perfume sometimes. I wear perfume. Hey, here's another one. Y'all wear perfume? I wear perfume every day, and I wear it for me. I wear something that makes me have a boost of energy. It's a mental thing for me, and I don't care if anybody smells it or even knows I have it on. It is for me. Do you guys do that? Y'all wear perfume for the same reason? All right, well, that's another question for another day. So, 
anyway, those are two of my little idiosyncrasy mm -hmm. things that I have to do. <laughs> Just so you know, most of the people who are saying they get dressed first, then do their makeup, then do their hair. So they're not quite as crazy as you are. I do that too. No, you don't. You do your hair first. You do dress, hair, makeup. Yeah, yeah, you do. yeah, maybe I do both. <laughs> I swear I do. I do every time I've, I've ever traveled with you. Do well, you. I just try to make you think I'm normal by doing it the same twice. <laughs> <laughs> trick, trick is I am not. I do it just. I get bored with me, so I do it different. I think maybe the outcome will be better here. Maybe if I do it different, then I'll get a better, a better, better end result. <laughs> 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 but unfortunately, same old every time. All right, guys. I hope this uh, answered some questions for you. Let me just take you back through. Let me just take you right back through the process here, just so you can see it one more time before we go. And I'll show you what it's looking like inside Mitch's car here. I'll let Mitch see so he won't be totally surprised tomorrow. <laughs> and uh, maybe we'll have it painted by the next time you see it, Mitch. So there you go. So there is a repair on the seat. And if you just jumped on this live, check this out. And also, if you would, be so kind to share this and uh, share it to your page. I would appreciate it. Especially if you know someone who needs to redo a seat, a boat seat, a car seat, or um, one more seats, tractor seats, whatever, or even a golf seat, just like we just did there. So remember, it will repair and restore the color. So it will also change the color. You can change it to dark to light, light to dark, whatever it is you want to go with, you can get great results. So there is the seat and we'll sand this like i said tomorrow and do a, a nice light sanding on this and then we will go back and give it a good paint job tomorrow using the beautiful color charcoal and uh, that's going to be the new color which is very very close to the color that you see here now so uh the seats will look like brand new and mitch won't have a hole in his seat any longer and uh, he can get some more years of love out of his vehicle that he is so fond of. So can't wait to see his face and I'm gonna bring him on my live when he comes to pick it up. I hope you're all right with that, Mitch. So uh, if you're on here, say that, <laughs> let me know. All right, guys, y'all have a great rest of your day and I'm gonna read through your comments right here and just to see who's right or who's wrong on this makeup situation we got going on here and uh, see what everybody says and see if I feel any more uh, good about how I get ready in the morning. All right, guys. We'll see y'all tomorrow. Bye.